Hi everyone, welcome to Slice of Life. My name is Dabney, I'm the Young Adult Librarian at the Twin Lakes Library System and I use they, them pronouns. For today's craft, we are going to be making perler beads. So if you've never done anything with perler beads and you don't know what they are, this is a great tutorial for you. Um, this is a craft we do a lot at the library. We have um, a perler bead station in our maker space area and um, after school, like when we are open, um, a lot of our teens like to come in and get those supplies and make their own perler bead patterns. So these are perler beads. They are just tiny plastic beads that you can form into patterns. You iron them, the plastic melts and fuses together, and you end up with something like this. Um, so these are some designs that I created um, you've got Neil and Andrew from the Foxhole Court. Um, this is not very canon representation. This is a little bit too cute for them. But I wanted to make them um, wearing these like little fox suits um, because foxes are their school mascot. So this is what the one side looks like. And this is honestly the side that I prefer to see. But on the other side, it looks like this. So this is kind of got um it looks a little bit more pixelated which is cool but um personally i just prefer the other side so that is what you could potentially make and like i said i created these um on my own but i did go online and look up a little chibi figure template so if you just go to google images and you search for like you know whatever you you're interested in making like really everything there's so many fandoms out there like you'll probably find something like these are some chibi figures from the anime and manga Haikyuu so that's kind of similar like template to what I use to make my figures and then just another like another couple examples you've got Deku and All Might from My Hero Academia and you've got the Stranger Things kids. Um, Perler beads, they also come sometimes with like little template books with different designs you can make. Usually these are just basic shapes like uh, flamingos and an octopus and the truck. So that's also a thing. And Perler beads are really, um, they're like for ages six and up because you know, little kids are going to want to chew on the beads. So if you have younger siblings at home, just be aware of that. Um, I do know some middle school students who like to chew on the beads, which, you know, is fine as long as you don't swallow them, I guess. And, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say chew on them because that's kind of gross. You don't know where the beads have been. But that's a whole other thing. Um, I also forgot to say that this is like Perler Beads, this is the brand, but there are some other like off brands you could buy, um, like Hama Beads, and this is just the kind I prefer. I think it's usually good not to mix the brands because they all kind of melt in a different way. So if you've mixed beads from two different brands, your design might not melt as well. So just keep that in mind, you can buy Perler Beads from Hobby Lobby, from Walmart, you can get them online. And just to show you some other kinds of beads, like online you can buy trays that have sorted colors. This is like the neutral color pack. They have all different kinds of color packs you can buy. You know, you can buy them separately packaged like this. Um, this is like a small bag. They have really big bags too. You could buy buckets of beads where you have to sort all the colors yourself. Um, I have spent hours sorting perler beads, so it's, it's a lot. This is like um, a bunch that I had sorted. They're all like kind of sparkly. Um, so I have like all these different containers. Here's another one of like kind of... Uh, I don't know, just kind of basic colors. So, 
there's tons of options like is you know if you want to get really into it there's all different kinds you could buy um like metallic or sparkly or kind of, some that kind of have like a pearlescent sheen to them i really like those and then the other thing i wanted to show you is some examples of different pegboards you could get so this is the one we're going to use today it's like a nice um, square it's kind of like the bigger size and it has these kind of like puzzle piece uh, attachments here so like if you buy a bunch of these squares you can hook them all together so if you're making a really big design that's um, a good feature so you've got like circles can't remember what this is called hearts and then they also have smaller kinds, so you can get some that are like animal shaped, stars, circles, hearts, I use my hearts a lot. So, And then the final thing we're going to look at is some tools. So when you make curler beads, you know, you could just leave your figure or shape or whatever you're making you can just leave it like this or you could kind of add some things to it you can make it um, a keychain or a pendant or um, Nick Stone this really great young adult author when she does her Instagram videos she sometimes is wearing these like amazing perler bead earrings they're like huge she wears some that are like avocados pretty regularly so that is an option for your perler beads. Um, you can make magnets. So if you like glue magnets to the back of them, you can make um, pins. Where are my pins? You can do pins. This is one type of pin you could stick to the back of them. There's other kinds too. And when I'm making things like keychains, um, some tools that I use, and we're going to show this later is an exacto knife and then these they're just from like a jewelry making kit I think from like Walmart and you know you've got like keychain rings you can get some of these like are really basic and cheap um, some you can get that are nicer little rings here and then as far as like if you're gluing a magnet or if you're gluing a pin back to your figure, um, hot glue works really well as long as the glue is like very, very hot. Um, because if the glue temperature is a little bit cool or warm or only sort of hot, um, sometimes your pin back or your magnet is going to kind of peel off of your figure, especially like if you've made a pin and you've got it on your backpack and it's getting jostled a lot, um, it may potentially come off. So be aware of that. You can also use this. Um, it's like E6000 plus and if you use this, you will have to wait at least like 24 hours for it to kind of set. Um, there's also crazy glue. So just some things to keep in mind. But now we are going to actually get into making perler beads. So let me get a few things moved out of the way here. Um, get my space set up. And so I'm making a wolf paw because um, I finished this book series this weekend. Um, it's not young adult, it's like for adults. So sorry um, but anyways it's about werewolves and it's very good and dear to my heart and so I wanted to make a wolf paw just to kind of celebrate um, and so that's what I'm gonna be making but let's see okay so I didn't have like a wolf paw template and I don't have like a way to print anything here so I thought I would make my own and what I did is I just did a Google image search for like a wolf paw print, downloaded the image, enlarged it, and then traced it onto paper. And then what I did is I took my board and I put it over the top of the design and like just followed as best as I could 
the outline with black beads and yeah kind of made some adjustments so it's not going to look exactly like this because uh, with perler beads you know it's difficult to convey a curve especially on something like this that is all straight lines so you know you've got to kind of work with it but we'll see that in a sec so I'm going to turn this down sorry this is maybe not the best setup ever I'm trying to get this to where you guys can see okay so I'm going to start with the black beads and I'm going to make the outline of my paw so sorry this is probably not going to be the most exciting video of all time maybe you can like fast forward if you want um, so what I'm doing is I'm using the tweezers to pick up the beads and place them and you can you know it takes a little while to get used to doing this but I usually try to get like two beads at once on here and that speeds it up a little bit so I always like to try to start with my outline first And it's nice when you're doing something like this that's um, pretty symmetrical. But typically, um, when I'm making something with perler beads, like I listen to an audiobook. So, just a little while ago, I was listening to an audiobook while I was coming up with this design. I'm listening to, again, sorry, it's not young adult, but I'm listening to The Starless Sea right now. And I can talk about this one because it's YA, but um, so the author who wrote this werewolf series, which is called the Green Creek series, his name is TJ Klune, and he recently released um, two books. One is YA, and it's called The Extraordinaries, and I'm reading that right now. I read probably 350 pages of it last night, um, and, like, I had to go to bed. It was, like, 4 in the morning, and I had 50 pages left, and I was just like, why? I need to know. But I knew that with my reading pace, I would probably be up until, like, after 5 if I kept reading. I was like, no, you need to go to bed. But anyways, The Extraordinaries is really good. It's about um, a boy named Nick Bell. And so he is um, really upset. He's 16. He's really obsessed with these local um, superheroes who are known as Extraordinaries. So anyways, he... He actually like writes fan fiction about um, one of the well kind of about both of the local superheroes so one guy is um, a hero and one guy is a villain and so he kind of has this like really well-known fan fiction he's been writing about them and also he's like kind of got this self insert character so basically He's writing, like, a romance between himself and the hero. Um, anyways, it's so good. And he... It's just really, really funny and delightful. And also covers, like, some serious subjects as well. Like, um, you know, when he was younger, like, his mom was his mom died um, his dad is a police officer and he also has like ADHD so there's all that going on um, and then he's got like this amazing friend group who I love 
all of them. They're just really funny and <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I would highly recommend it. It's a new book and it'll be on the shelves soon. Um, I don't think it's been cataloged yet. All right, we are getting close to being done with the outline. There. Fox paw, and I mean, sorry, wolf paw. And then I'm going to be doing clear sparkly beads on the inside part of the paws. Um, And this part should go a little bit faster. And if you're wondering why I'm doing like sparkly purple for a wolf paw, um, it has something to do with like the werewolves in the book. So this is not a spoiler or anything, but um, there's different kinds of werewolves. So there's like alphas, there's betas, and there's omegas. And so alpha wolves their eyes are red like when they sh they're like wolf eyes I guess I should say are red and then betas have um, orange eyes and omegas have violet eyes so um, one of the characters in the book is an omega so um, which is like, I think they kind of talk about this too, like if you've ever watched Teen Wolf, you know, and how I think the alphas in Teen Wolf have um, red eyes. And I think maybe the omegas have blue eyes. It's been a minute since I've watched Teen Wolf. But I really like it. Um, and to be honest, um, when I was reading The Extraordinaries, the main character, Nick, he kind of reminds me a lot of, like, first season styles in Teen Wolf. Um, so you've not watched Teen Wolf. Um, again, we have it at the library. You could check out the DVDs. Um, it's just kind of like a high school drama um, about these kids, and one of them gets turned into a werewolf. And that's Scott. And his best friend is Styles, and so Styles is just like, um, you know, pretty hyper, pretty all over the place, really smart, um, but kind of like geeky and awkward. And um, his dad is, I think, the police chief in the town that they're in. And so as soon as I started reading The Extraordinaries, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy like reminds me so much of styles like you know kind of wanting to know like everything that's going on and sort of like getting into trouble um but not like too bad trouble but Okay, getting close to this being done. Again, I'm sorry that this part is kind of boring, um, but I hope you can use your imagination and when you're doing it and either pretend that like, <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, it's a good thing to do, like, if you're watching a TV show that you don't have to keep your eyes on the screen all the time, you know, you can, or, like, if you're watching YouTube videos, um, kind of, like, in the background while you're doing this, listening to audiobooks or podcasts, those are, this is, like, kind of a fun activity to do while you're doing that, and, um, you know, if you... Someday when we're able to do things with people again, it's a nice communal activity to do as well. 
Um, like I said, at the library, a lot of the teens kind of like to, you know, congregate together and work on different designs. And one reason that I have so many perler beads at home is like I have an Etsy shop where I make perler bead things and sell them. So, you know, hey, that's another thing you, of ways, you know, entrepreneurial things you could do with your hobbies. I will say I don't really make very much money at all with it, but um, just throwing that out there for you guys as a suggestion. I have no like back when I used to go to conventions, you know, they have people in Artist Alley selling what they've made and sometimes they'll have people selling perler beads and it's so cool like all the designs they do. Um, you know, obviously it's usually a lot of like fandom stuff, anime things, um, Pokemon figures, video game related things. Um, they'll have some of them will just be huge. Like, I don't even know how many beads <laughs> it takes to do those. Um, it's really impressive. When I was, you know, planning out this fox paw, I had looked up, like, fox perler, not fox paw, I'm sorry, wolf paw. I looked up, like, some wolf perler bead figures, and there's one that was so cool, but it used, like, nine boards, so thousands and thousands, probably thousands of beads, and I was just like, nah, I don't, can't do that. But... Alright, so we're almost done, and then we're going to iron it, and, okay. Ta -da! Alright, so now I'm going to get out my piece of wax paper so usually when you buy um, some perler bead boards they're gonna come with this paper and I've got my iron here I'm gonna iron it so I have my iron kind of to the like highest setting and what you do is you press down and I move the iron around on the surface because I want to get sort of an equal distribution of heat and pressure on my design so it all gets you know equally fused together there's not going to be areas like I you know different people have ways they want to do their designs like some people don't want the back to be this like fused together and some people are like me and they want it like where the beads are pretty much like you can't see the holes in the beads anymore so that's just a matter of preference okay so that's done all right i'm just gonna wait for this to cool off for about a minute um, wow, this video has been going on for so long. <laughs> Let's see. So yeah, I always like to let my design cool for like a minute or two and then peel off the paper. So a couple of suggestions for like when you're ironing. So I iron mine like this. Like I just keep it on the board and put the paper on it and iron it. However, um, on YouTube, I see a lot of people do something different, which is where they will get like masking tape or painter's tape, usually that's like thicker together, and they'll lay strips of it on top of the beads while it's still on the board and like press it down really well so that like the entire design is adhered to the tape. And then they slowly peel it off the board and then they lay it with like the tape side down on the table, they put wax paper on the other side, and they iron it. And I think um, the reason they do that is so the boards 
don't get warped and um, possibly to keep the design flatter. So let me show you guys. Peeling off the paper. There we go. I'm going to put something a little bit heavy on here, like a couple books, just for another minute. Um, and that is going to like flatten our shape while it cools down. And then the board is just sitting here and it's cooling down. One problem we've had at the library is our boards warping. And um, honestly, I think maybe the reason behind that is like sometimes we weren't ironing on like completely flat surfaces and then um, the board just kind of warped while it was warm. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so again, like if you were putting tape on your design and peeling it off and then ironing, that's going to, you know, save your boards. They're not going to warp or anything like that. Um, I think that also probably help if you were doing a design that had like multiple boards hooked together because sometimes when you're ironing the design at places where the boards have joined together, um, sometimes it's hard to keep the ironing um, smooth. So just some thoughts. All right, let's see if this is cooled off enough because what we're going to do is if I can find my tools, we're going to use our X-Acto knife and our other tools to make a keychain for this. So I'm going to get one of these rings. Ah! Super small. And I'm going to get these two tools here. Not sure what kind of keychain ring I'm going to use. Maybe circular, maybe this kind. We'll set those aside. Alright, so what I'm going to do is cut a hole in the middle of this bead. So I'm going to lower this down. So I just stick the end of my X-Acto knife in here, press down till it goes through, and then slowly rotate it so it's cutting out a circle in the middle. And take out that little piece of plastic. And then to widen the hole a bit, I use this here, and I'm just going to stick it through this hole. There might be better ways to do this, but this is the way I've always done it. So now I've got like a hole here. Then what you do is you get your little ring. I'm going to put this first. So this is where your little tools come in. So I'm going to grab it with this one and then this one and pull it apart like this. And then it's open and then we're going to Put this through our hole. This part is always a little bit tricky, to be honest. Hmm. Not sure if it's gonna work this time. <laughs> well, I am just failing over here. Okay, there we go. And then you close it up. And then I'm going to use this one just because I think it's going to work a bit easier. I 
say that. <laughs> Let me see if I can squeeze this open. Aha, there we go. Just trying to loop this on the back here. And I am struggling. There we go. This could have been better, but um, <laughs> there, it's a little keychain. Honestly, I think this would work better if um, you can buy some keychains that like have a longer chain going up. So I'll probably try to find one of those and replace this later. Um, but that's just kind of like some basics on how to do that. But yeah, hopefully you all um, enjoyed this video and learned something and I will see you later. Bye!